Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Sama, Seattle Sacred Music and Art in Seattle. Uh, but tonight we're going to have a very special guest live from uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, Liraz Charahi will be on in just a little bit. Um, she is a singer, an actress, a dancer. If you've been um, locked down, as many are, you might have seen her in the uh, Apple Plus um, Israeli series Tehran, where she plays um, a pretty amazing Mossad agent. But I got to know her as a musician. Um, she's uh, She is of Iranian um, Israeli descent. Um, her family moved in the early 70s. She was born in Israel in the village or the town of uh, Ramla to a Sephardic uh, family of Iranian uh, Jewish descent. And she uh, went to school, um, became a dancer, became an actress. You might have seen her in a few films beforehand. She played with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. She was his uh, girlfriend in the movie A Late Quartet. Um, but she continued to produce music and get music out. And um, I've been a fan for a bit. I've been playing her on my shows. And uh, the most recent record is called Azan, which translates as woman in Farsi. And it's a really, really uh, intriguing record on multiple levels. It It, it is a, a kind of like a look back into time when um, there was a pretty amazing vibrant uh, scene in Israel everything from psychedelic to disco to funk to surf rock experimentation was going on there's a lot more cultural exchanges between uh, different countries throughout the region but yet it has a, a feeling of to the future um, and um, some of the songs are really powerful in a context of um, you know, a, a kind of like a, a spiritual, sacred sense of trying to connect with the land, trying to connect with history, to, trying to connect with nature. Um, and the other part, which I found really intriguing, is that um, she worked with a bunch of uh, Iranian musicians, um, mostly, you know, uh, clandestinely because of the relationship between the Israeli government and the Iranian government at this time is uh, strained, to say the least. Um, uh, but from a musical perspective, it's it's people creating beautiful sounds and and telling stories. So I'm going to start with um, uh, a video we have of her, the most recent video. The new record is once again is Zan. It just came out on Glitterbeat Records. We love Glitterbeat, um, but this particular video really kind of speaks to a bunch of the stuff I'm talking about in a better way. This is Liraz. The new video is called Inja. And then we'll have Laraz on in just a bit. She's going to be performing live music and a lot more.
All right. I was Liraz, and let's see if technology is working. And she's here right now. Nope, she's not here right now. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, we'll wait on that. We're living in uh, in magical times. Obviously, the fact that we can uh, communicate with each other uh, across thousands of miles. So she'll be on in just um, a little bit. Uh, a little uh, more information about Liraz. Um, she's an actress, so she ended up in in Hollywood. Um, and uh, Hollywood has a phenomenal um, Iranian population. It's, you know, uh, Tehlangelis, I believe, is the name for it. And so the music and the culture really evolved under the, the um, gaze of the Hollywood lifestyle. And so a lot of really interesting energy and uh, really interesting musical experimentations. Some of it, you know, super poppy like you know there's pop and there's like extreme pop and some of it um a lot of like expats um that left after the revolution ended up in iran uh, were in the country and in the united states and creating their own particular uh i guess nostalgia um for that so it was a, an interesting mix of all of those energies coming together and creating uh, a, a really fabulous sound. So you have somebody like Laraz living in Israel, um, becoming an actress, and then ending up in Tehran and just like being overwhelmed by everything that was on here. I won't say overwhelmed exactly, but you know, just it's a different kind of lifestyle. And I, uh, from what I read of um, of her background, there was a bit of that in the influence of this particular record and the one uh, that came right before. Um, she um, began performing at the age of five, and uh, she made her debut as a stage actress at the Habima National Theater, where she worked professionally from 11 to 14. Um, if you're a fan of classic of uh, contemporary dance, you probably know of the Bayezvi Arts uh, School in Israel. She also appeared on Israeli TV. That's where she first got her start. Um, her first films are Fair Game and Late Quartet. As uh, a singer, she released the, the singer Od Tzorhayin and Al Tafsik, which also played on the radio in Israel. Um, she, um, in 2020, she's, uh, she released this record, this record Zan, which uh, in Farsi, which is the Persian language, means woman. And she has been actively um, speaking about that for quite a while, uh, the role of women in... Um, and all different societies. It's it's it seems to be the uh, the one of the one of the 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 the, uh, the goals um, of this record. You know, artists will have a, a perspective that they want to share with their music, and this is one of those, and it's powerful. Uh, the first uh, release we just saw on Glitter Beat was the record uh, was the track Inja, which I loved. It was filmed in the desert and has you know it speaks to her um, background as a dancer, and also um, some pretty powerful art direction um, in that. Really, really, really like that. Um, and, um, you know, I've been watching the the show Tehran, uh, where she plays a Mossad agent. And that's, uh, uh, it's, an, it's a powerful, it's an interesting story. I like it because it humanizes both the Israelis and the Iranians in that series. It's a complicated story. It's got plot plot twists. I'm not going to give anything away, but I really um, enjoyed the first series, the first season um, that I saw. I'm not sure if there's going to be another one, but this is one of those um, really intriguing um, stories where it's so easy to turn the bad guy into just the bad guy. And it's like these paper characters, they're evil or they're just too good both sides both both cultures um both causes are complicated and there's nuance there which i personally find is uh incredibly important at this particular time that we're living in where it's so easy to paint people as one or the other so um uh, i see that Laraz is back on so i'm gonna wait for the thumbs up and then we'll uh we'll kick it in okay here it is let's do it technology okay yeah. Eric. Hey, we're here. Hello, Seattle, and everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Some of Seattle. Uh, one day you'll be here. Have you been to Seattle before? No, never. Okay. Dan has. I mean, and big, big kudos to Dan. He brought um, all of this 
um, all of this culture. We first started with Gilialo in Poland, in, Kat in uh, Gdynia, of all places, and here we are right now. So let's start. Let's, people are tired of listening to me talk, so let's start with the song. Can you tell me the name of the song we're going we're gonna to hear right now? Yeah, yeah it's from uh, my new album called Zan. It's uh, yeah. women in Farsi. And here is Uriba Amel Kimrat. He's on the guitar and actually wrote um, lots of songs in the album with me and produced the album. And Amin Sadov is the bass bass man. Good to see you again. <laughs> also is playing in my two uh, Iranian albums and I'm very happy and excited to share this live streaming to Summer Seattle tonight. Okay, perfect, thank you. Pia pia yore man pia pia jose Try to get so the Wi-Fi is not so good, but we'll 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 uh, we'll we'll cut. Oh, okay, great, great, great. Okay, so um, so with the iPhone, try to capture close up of her and also side of her because I've got straight, so we can get side of her and the musicians just bits and pieces here. Uh, we'll we'll add we'll layer the audio underneath it so he doesn't have to sing. But just more of that footage would be great. Perfect. Yes. Send everything. We'll send everything. But perfect. Perfect. But I'm stoked that we can make the internet work because people are listening. Okay. Take ten. Liraz, on Sama, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. That is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you. Um, so we, um, I'm gonna, 
Um, we're going to do one quick technical um, fix. So I'm going to go solo while we do this in just a bit. So let me just do that right now. It is magic. Okay. So solo here again. We're, um, we're uh, as you see, we're, uh, we're, we're live. Laraz is live in, um, in Tel Aviv right now. I believe Tel Aviv. Um, uh, and uh, we had this one quick thing with the internet that we have to fix right now. And I have to stress this to everybody out there. I know that uh, that we're all going through uh, a challenging time in the West, especially now with the surge of COVID. But, you know, I've been doing some enough since March and it's been fascinating. Like, you know, we've been in, uh, we've had live streams from, uh, from uh, Bamako, Mali. We've had live streams from Slovenia, from uh, uh, Wroclaw, Poland, and we're looking to do more, more, and more. It, this is amazing. But the reality of the internet is intriguing uh, because things that we thought we wouldn't be able to do until maybe like 20 years from now, we're doing now, and it's being hyper accelerated because everybody's online right now. And so, um, uh, you know, there's a part of me that still feels like this is amazing. We're still doing here. We're actually connecting with each other in this way. Um, I didn't expect it to happen, but it's here right now and it's phenomenal. And so we'll be back with Laraz in just a second. Um, a couple of things that I also uh, wanted to, I'll talk about with her, but I wanted to show everybody here. There is this, this movement that seems to be happening right now in global music where uh, certain sounds have been kind of not exactly rediscovered, but reabsorbed and and uh, manifest into new sounds. Uh, like Alton Gun out of Turkey and Holland is an example. They just released a new record. Um, and it's this this homage to um, to an, another time, uh, you know, a complicated time, but it's just really interesting to look back at something. Not with a sense of nostalgia, but with a sense of, uh, of uh, discovery i find okay let's see if we're back on are we back on yeah. no okay hey um we're, we're making it work that looks better okay great so i can see i can hear you we're on together so laraz let's start with a, a quick interview if we can yes. uh what was the inspiration for this new record i mean it's not like you're bored you know you're an actress you're a mom you're a dancer mm -hmm. you've been releasing stuff and i'm always intriguing like well, what what is it that um, what what's your battery, and how can we get some? Because that's a lot of stuff you're doing right now, especially under this time. What uh, um, what was the inspiration? For sure, um, I had this big hope in my heart, which I was carrying most of my life, asking the question: Who am I? Am I Israeli or am I Iranian? Because I grew up in an Iranian home in Israel, with both parents who arrived from. Tehran uh, back in the 70s before the revolution and they really struggled to be Israelis we, when the time was very busy for, for Israel and for them and mm -hmm. for sure for me as a, as a little girl I was asking where the hell did I came from but they had beautiful answers and stories about Iran but when I grew up uh, every time I opened the television I saw that Iran uh, is the, it, it's Iran that I don't know from the stories of my parents and my grandmothers mm -hmm. and my grand and grandparents. And I thought something is, is very, very, uh, um, something is wrong because I see extreme Islam and regime and uh, muted women that are not allowed to sing for the last 42 years. And I'm carrying a very, very heavy stories of my grandmothers who tried to be singers and try to be the women that they wanted to be, but they, they wouldn't, be, they wouldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't. And I think um, muted uh, women, it's not just an expression of what's going on since the revolution. The Iranian culture, it's something in, uh, inside our DNA that asking us to be polite and nice. And the first time I could explore Iran that I cannot visit, unfortunately, was in Tehran, was in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I actually understood that I'm carrying this big hole and I can actually literally know how to fill it with the culture of Teherangelis because, Derek, you know, there are million, million Iranian people in, in Los Angeles, Teherangelis. And yeah. I, quit, I quit all my auditions and meetings and casting directors 
And I told my agents that I found Iran that I am looking for so for so many years. And wow. then I felt that literally I'm asking myself the same question, who am I? Do I have to choose which side am I, the Iranian or the Israeli one? And I was very confused asking if I want to be a Hollywood star or if I want to sing. And for sure, I told, I said to myself, if I want to sing, I will never forgive myself because I'm a singer. And I had this ongoing career, but my heart was really, really empty. Um, so I remember the same moment that I stood on this crossroad asking this question. And I felt literally that like a baby is falling inside my arms, into my arms and asking me to raise her and to sing her in Farsi, my grandmother's songs. And I was like, what is going on? I'm not singing in Farsi. I'm Israeli. I sing in Hebrew. But after a, like two seconds, I understood that this is my mission to sing these songs. And I'm like a pipe to, 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 to tell the stories of my heritage. And I'm very happy to do it today. Uh, of course, I released my first album called Nas. And it was produced by Rejoicer. And very, very, very quick, lots of people from Iran uh, discovered my music. Um, and sing it and dance to it in, in like like underground parties in Iran. And for sure, my biggest dream was to record an album and to write music with Iranian artists okay. based in Iran, Tehran. And that's the answer to your question. It's a big, big, long answer, but this is the reason. It was very important to me, no matter what, to accomplish this big dream because, first of all, it heals me. Second, it gives me the opportunity to be in touch with my friends, my Iranian fellows, artists that I cannot actually visit, unfortunately. And I really realized that Iran loves Israel and Israel loves Iran so much, no matter what and how, how complex both countries are, we are really love each other and we're building this little bridge of, of art with our, with our culture, with our art and it Perfect. Okay. Did I lose you? No, I think you're still there. Can we... Okay. Laros, can you hear me? Nope. Okay. So um, we'll, we'll wait for Laros to jump back on. We are dealing with... Um, we're dealing uh, with... Let me solo. We're dealing with uh, tech, uh, tech issues that happens. Uh, mm -hmm. This is... This is one of the things that I find really intriguing um, in these kinds of stories. And if she's back on, we'll throw her in there. Let's see. Okay, you're back. Middle East. We're in the Middle East. Huh? Okay, okay, okay we're, it, it happened. I know, I understand. It's totally fine. Uh, but but let's, let's I, I want to actually speak to that because one of the reasons that um, Sama exists is to advocate for and present the power of music to transcend uh, differences. Yes. Um, and this is this is going back a little bit, but when I first met uh, Dan, he brought Gilialo uh, to KXP and we had a long conversation and I got into a little more nuance about what the experiences are for uh, Ethiopians in Israel and the, the, the complexity, not from a political perspective, but just from a cultural perspective. You know, there's like so many different people living there. When people think of Israel, they think of one thing. When people think of Iran, they think of one thing. It's like these, but there's, there's, um, there's a nuance to how people are living. There's a nuance how people are expressing themselves. There's a nuance to cuisine. There's a nuance to music. And it sounds like you had an experience where, you know, you went to uh, L.A., you reconnected with this, with this, um, your legacy. You, you, connect, you, you reconnected with, with, your, um, with your heritage that doesn't, it, it's not tied to a current political climate. Mm -hmm. It is an ancient heritage which you have a, um, a, uh, a right to, a right to as an mm -hmm. artist to present to, um, and I find, and th that legacy isn't like trapped in amber. You know what I mean? It's like, it's evolving. You know, I've been LA to Angeles is evolving constantly. It's insane, you know? And so, but yet there's like, you know, uh, ancient artists, not ancient artists, but you've got the classical uh, Persian artists. You've got, you know, the stars of the 70s um, that um, are still there 
you know, putting stuff out. And then you've got this new, really interesting mix of things. And when I hear your music, I'm like, you're falling into that, into that place. But the fact that you're Israeli and, you know, there's, there's, um, shall we say, uh, some abrasion that's going on between the two, uh, the two political systems at this particular moment, your role in, and I'm seeing this with other, um, uh, you know, expat Iranian artist is to share your perspective, and it's being like you know in Iran, you know, because I've I've talked to artists that like they love it, the people there love it because they're tired of the bullshit, and it's yeah. just like, can we just be people together? So I'll stop, sp I'll stop talking about that. You know, this is one of the reasons I invited you because this is really good and it's beautiful and it's like, and it's so needed. But let's hear another song, please. While the internet, why the internet gods are working. Yes, it's nice not to be excused about choosing side. I'm both. I'm Iranian and I'm Israeli, and it's it's a it's a big thing. It's a it's a big gift for me. So the next song will be Zan Bezan, which is the first song that we released from the album. Uh, Brown and Kinroth, this uh, guy, this beautiful guy, and I wrote it for the first. Uh, it was the first step to to ask the Iranian uh, artists, and musicians, to participate with us. It was the first call to them. The song is talking about uh, women's freedom, asking them to have the revolution by singing, dancing, and rejoicing, and not forgetting themselves inside this big, big, um, muted uh, um, country. Um, it's called Zan Bezan, Sing, Woman. <laughs> Oh, 
on Sama, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Tell me what the lyrics are. Oh, the lyrics are about the woman's separation, which I was just talking before this song about the, the fact that, you know, I had a grandmother that mm -hmm. dreamed to, to sing, to be a singer. And she told me the stories of uh, being engaged at age 13 and trying to find out how can she sing. She used to run at night to the underground basement when she could, you know, just catch a, a beautiful shows of Iranian uh, players on beautiful instruments. Um, I actually, yesterday we shot a, a new music video about me singing in this old Persian club with smoking guys, um, which which I was the singer who ran away just to sing. She just wanted to sing. Okay. Um, I remember the stories of my mother telling me that she remembers she was like three years old and my grandmother took her to these this clubs. So every time my grandmother uh, wanted to sing, she, she, she grabbed the microphone in a party in a restaurant, in a, in a wedding, and I remember the face of my grandfather. He was so mad about her because back at the time and today, being a singer or an artist, it's not a very good thing in Iran. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I can really sing to her and to the women in Iran and because of them and today with them. So this is the what's the song, the song about Zambes and... <laughs> Perfect. Um, when making the record, you how did you find um, artists to work with in Iran? Because it was a, it's an interesting story um, because of you know the um, the, the difficulties um, that are going on from a political perspective. How did you find these artists? And I know that some are now um, you know open about that they work with you, but some are still uh, in the underground. How did you find them and? And start collaborating with them because I, I I'm interested in it in that story from a technology perspective, but also you know from a cultural perspective because it's interesting. This is some of the things that's also in in uh, the in the series that you're in in Tehran. Is like how do you connect? How do you um, how do you uh, you know there is there is a baggage propaganda baggage about the two yeah. cultures. How'd you go like hey you want to be on a track? Like what's the what's the what was the process with that? It started from friendship. Uh, they've been writing me messages that some of them are trying to download all the videos and the, and the music of of uh, the first uh, album Nas, and they started to sending me their music, and I was like, wow, they are very 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 talented. So the minute I started to build this dream about writing an album with Iranian musicians. I was asking them if it makes sense that we will work together. Some of them muted me in a second because they were afraid. Some of them said, yeah. okay, sure, we're in. It's, it's a dream coming true because we love Israel so much. Some of them started working with me and Uli, and they got disappeared in the middle of the way. And some of them were very, very, uh, you know, generous to give us the song, but they didn't want their name signed on the album. So mm -hmm. we had it like a roller coaster, you know, we opened um, 
uh, a laptop inside a recording studio in Israel mm -hmm. and a laptop in a in, in recording studio in, in Tehran, which actually all my idol singers that I adore um, recorded their beautiful albums there. It called Pop, Pop Studio in Tehran. Okay. Um, wow. So, yes, we had it for, for lots of hours and days, and sometimes we, we lost it. We lost connection. I remember when I shoot the... Um, the TV series Tehran, it was kind of the end of, of recording the album and we started to send songs for mixing and mastering. And I remember that I was in the hotel before the shooting and I got a call from Tehran telling me that I should be out of Israel soon. And I said, why, what's going on? And they've been asking me, where are you? And I said, I'm in Tehran. I mean, no, I'm in Athens shooting Tehran. What's going on? And they told me, okay, there was a big explosion and they killed Suleimani. And I think Iran is going to attack Israel. So escape yeah. Israel. And I was so afraid. I was very confused. And of course, most of the actors who participated in the TV series Tehran made a very big choice of not not visiting Iran anymore because they're participating in an Israeli wow. TV series. So it all mixed together with my emotions and feeling, and it was the first time I can say that I understood what anxiety is. And I had sleepless nights and I was um, I was very stressed, very much. But the no minute God. I understood that this is what we're doing, and we're, we're doing it together, and this is the only way we can connect each other. I said to myself, it's all good. It's all for oh, the best. That is an amazing story. Thank you for sharing that. That is beautiful, because it's it's everything from, like, you know, there, um, during this time that we're in, um, I always say this, but it is an interesting time that we're in. You know, there are so many things that are outside of our control. Yeah. Um, you know, and when one a country attacks another country that's out of our control like you know i i grew up in poland and it was like there's the stories of it's like okay there's an invasion there's nothing you can do and you're stressed and it's like you know the stories from my grandmother was just like you have nothing to complain about you're not in a war and it's like you're right you're right um but we're in a pandemic and so there are so many things that we can't really you know we're not there are things that we can't we have no control over but there are things that we're all connected by and that is the fact that we're all dealing with this particular thing so i want to ask you two things um one is um how are you dealing you know like what 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 is your process right now because even your record out the series came out your career you should be you know traveling you should be touring this all this stuff that should be going on around you but everything's out of your control right now so what yeah. how are you how are you coping with that and and um, the other question to think is later, what does the future look like for you, knowing that you've created this work right now, which I applaud you, because some artists are not. Some artists have created work and they're like, I'm not putting it out. It's not the right time for that. Um, or they're just, they're just, they're, you said, like you said, sleepless nights, anxiety, mm -hmm. they can't cope. Artists are sensitive. How are you individually dealing with this? Oh, you made me cry a little bit inside myself. <laughs> Good question, Derek. <laughs> um, literally, when 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 COVID came, Dan and I, my manager and I, and Uri and myself, we thought, what are we going to do? Because the album is ready to go. Uh, but all the, the schedule of touring got canceled. 2020 is gone. And we didn't know what to do with the album. We said, okay, the, the, the shows are canceled, but we have a beautiful album. What should we do? And the next step was that we got informed that the label that we were supposed to, to release the album is closing because of the COVID. Uh, that was a really, really heartbreaking and breaking point for us. But we, we did not lose faith because we said to ourselves, you know, COVID can take our plans, but it cannot take our dreams. And we accomplished the dream of writing this album, so we are not going to give up. And people will hear this album in COVID time. Um, and of course, a uh, little bit, the label and, uh, and the beautiful people from Glitterbeat uh, was 
very brave to to make the step uh, and to work with us, and we are very happy to work with them. And they they told us, okay, it's going it's going to be out on November, and, and we're like, what? Wow. Yes, uh, next month's uh, the first single, and 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 more. And I was so happy. Of course, I know I knew that all that all the PR tour will be in Zoom. So I was in Zoom for the last three months, <laughs> zooming my heart yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. But it was oh. nice. It was like a big therapy. You know, I felt like every every time I had an interview with beautiful interviewers, by the way, um, it's like a therapy. You know, it's like I'm I'm revealing and taking off and peeling off the big layers, the thick layers of, of being this Iranian nice, good girl. And I'm the we, the woman that I am today with this album. And the PR was via Zoom. And and I think it's beautiful if you if you take the bad thing. The good thing is that people are much more aware and awake and sensitive because it's it's an eye to eye interview. It's very if you can feel the intimacy, you know? It's incredibly yeah. intimate. It's like yeah. somebody in your face, you know, and and I applaud you because I've seen the interviews. It's like you're putting it out there. Like some are like, I, I'm comfortable on stage with lights and you away, not right in front of my face asking me all these questions. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about the power of music to change and transform, um, but I'd love to hear another song, please. We're gonna do a last song. It's a song talking about being drunk out of love. You know, uh, um, Iranian poetry has lots of beautiful metaphors. Like, if I want to tell you that I love you, I can tell you I'm gonna eat your liver. I mean, it's 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 that that big. I mean, everything's big and 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 powerful and very metaphoric. Um, so this song is talking about feeling drunk out of love by the smell of my love, my son. Oh, yeah, I'll be 
Summer, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. Um, I, that was beautiful. Uh, I want to stress a couple of things. Um, there is a political situation, um, but the music transcends that. And this is one of the things that I'm finding that some people have a block with, that it's like the politics ov overrides everything. And they tend to be, I don't know if there's a, there's probably some Farsi or Hebrew word for it, but um, probably something to do with a donkey or something, but um, they're like just stuck. Like, the, I can't get past this. I can't get past this. It drives me personally crazy because it's like, it, it takes it takes the, the human out of the politics. It just becomes the politics. It's like the political animal. Um, and that um, is, to me, really shallow. You know, it's just you look only looking at things from one perspective. And listening to your music and hearing your story and hearing what's been going on in your life, um, I... I'm really intrigued in how you are taking all of these things, this experience of knowing that at home you're speaking Farsi, yet you're speaking Hebrew in school and in in your in you know in the in the world, but you have this your own home life when you were growing up. You become an actress. You travel. You see other Iranians throughout um, your your experience, and you and you tap into this ancient history. I mean, we're talking about the Persian Empire. We're talking like you know. Out, like one of the 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 the, the core uh, civilizations of humanity, um, of Western humanity, and so you have a lot to tap into, a lot of uh, of energy, a lot of energy to help people get past their blocks, uh, to get past their their blinders. Where I I can only see you this way. I can't see you in any other way. Everything else is a lie. It's the propaganda. It's the stuff we're living right now, especially here. Mm -hmm. um, as a musician, especially as an artist, you know, there's a reason why there's uh, uh, women who weren't allowed to sing, you know, for, for, for a bunch. But one of them is that it creates a powerful emotional energy in that, you know, there's you feel something. There's there's something transcendent, truly transcendent. There's a lot of stuff there uh, to work with. And I'm curious as an artist, um, knowing that you, you know, you have to tap into that in order to make something authentic. And the music that you're making is authentic. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff out there that isn't, but your stuff is. But you've got this history there, and you've got this now, um, this uh, um, charter, I guess, or an obligation. You're making music for people in Israel. You're making music for expats. You're singing in Farsi. You're making music for Iranians. Uh, you're making music for... Arabs, you're making music for everybody in the world. Talk about that if you can, because you know some artists are just making. I'm making music for the clubs. What? What do you want? But <laughs> you're not. You're doing something bigger than that. Unless I'm just, you know, wrong. But I don't think I am. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what I felt when I when I was asking to sing in Farsi. Of course, I arrived from Los Angeles with you know, overweight suitcases with vinyls and CDs of, of the music of the 70s. I, I recognized in, inside the, uh, the voices of the, the Iranian singers something 
thick, like a thick layer of sassiness and courage, and I loved it. So I was telling my agent, my parents, my family, my friends, I'm going to sing in Farsi, and, and they were like shocked and say, no, 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 don't do it. You're in the mainstream, you, you're going very, you're, you have an ongoing career, it's good. You're going to be in the niche. The minute I've heard the, the, the word niche, I said, yes, I want to be in the niche. Yes, this is me. This is, this is what I want to be. I don't care. I want to sing in Farsi. When I released the first album, I did it for myself as a gift to my heritage, to, to my family, to myself. I wasn't sure that Israeli people will come to my shows. And I was very surprised that in Israel, people are very open to music and they arrived to my shows. And when we took the project out of Israel and we got bigger and bigger tours, I understand that music, like Iranian music, goes inside each one of us, of all of, of, all of us, hearts, you know? It's sorry of my broken English, sorry about that. Um, it, it was it was clear that people love to hear the Iranian music. My shows are are you know getting like big like a big uh, Iranian uh, party and people are dancing like in, in big Iranian weddings and they don't know the language of course. Of course I'm recognizing some like 10 Iranian people or five Iranian people and it, it's nice to, to hear someone is singing with me, but people love this music and music and music and it opens people's hearts. It doesn't matter if you are thinking that it will go to to my my Iranian heritage or to the world, you know? So I actually felt that I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay by singing in Farsi. And it, it's not only for myself, it's for, for everybody. And the world is open to hear any kind of music. And um, I'm very happy about it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good, uh, that's exactly what we need to hear. We need to hear this, and especially now. Can we hear another song? Yes, we're going to hear it. In Jaw, um, I have a funny story about this, this uh, uh, um, song because I wrote it um because israel feels all, always like uh, we have like a political crisis or economic crisis and myself i had ups and downs like a personal crisis and i wrote this song about it and it's if i can translate the the the, the words it, it's like it was written inside the covid um just sticking to each other and be a good friend because we will not probably will not be very rich or be very like extremely high and happy and we'll have ups and downs but the most important thing is that we will look at each other's eyes and just love each other here in jaw is here here and now in jaw <laughs> Yeah, the door, 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 y
Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laraz. Thank you. Uh, massive great. success. Um, look forward to seeing you here um, and you. seeing me there inevitably uh, once yeah. we're, we're past this. Um, uh, the new record is Zan. I want to thank Little Beat Records. I want to thank Seattle Theater Group and Live out of Bamako. I want to uh, thank Dan. I want to thank also April, Benita, and Dagmara. This is Seattle, a sacred music and arts. Sama, uh, next week we've got uh, Nias, another Persian um, American uh, band. Then we've got Mamas Baba Ganoush out of Copenhagen, Barmer Boys out of Rajasthan. We're just getting started. More information can be found on uh, SeattleSacredMusic.com, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch. We're all over the place. It's a new world. Okay, everybody, Liraz, please stay safe. Um, everybody in the band, also be well. Um, I gotta stop putting the camera, my hand in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, be well and um, and continue uh, putting out amazing music. Continue doing this work. It's needed, especially now. Like you know, if we're gonna get through this, politically, emotionally, psycholog uh, psychologically, uh, transformationally, we need artists. We need singers. We need musicians such as you to kind of help guide the way. I know it's a lot to carry. I'm sorry to throw it on you, but um, you know, we all we all have a job. We all here. Okay. Be well. Be well. Be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.